and I'm noticing that discipline is very overlooked. But in the same way, it's also it, it's a key factor because that's what defines anybody's career. Welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klaassen. This evening, I'm chatting to a young man, a real estate agent, who is here to help us educate first time home buyers on what we need to do and the challenges that we face as first timers when investing in property. I am sitting with Nkateko Maluleke. But before we get started, you know that we have amazing content coming to your screen every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tungwa Kamalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's Monday to Friday live at 7 p.m. on Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And of course, if you're interested in farming and agriculture, Mbali comes to your screens. That's Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And just before we head over to the weekend and we start our week off with Chad Viveros, that's Friday and Monday evening at 8 p.m. Chad travels amazing houses from Four Ways to Santon to Houghton. Definitely something you do not want to miss. And this evening, I am chatting to Nkateko Maluleke, also known, you know, in Santon, he goes by the name of Cat. Isn't that true? Cat. Very true. Thank you so much for having me, Esti. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Nkateko, for joining me. Mm. So like I introduced you, you know, we haven't spoken to real estate agents in such a long time and I'm so excited to, you know, open up the field and also mm. learn about your stories. I think it's so important to listen to the stories on the other side, mm -hmm. not just those buying the houses. Of course, of so, course. So, and I'm going to jump straight into it. I'd love to hear some more, but, but before I even get started, mm -hmm. my biggest, my first question is that we all have these assumptions and the stigma-based uh, around these estate agents. Mm -hmm. What would you say Kat's purpose is in being an estate agent? What is your sole purpose? Well, you know, SD, I think the first thing we can really touch base on is, especially with regards to purpose, is it's a matter of need, you know? Um, purpose is always associating with dealing with the need. So if you, you will always have a need to go to the doctor, you don't need to go to the doctor, but the need will always arise. Mm -hmm. So the same thing is literally the same with real estate agents on the basis of we are practitioners and we are here to assist you um, with everything property related. You know, you don't always have to um, engage with a, with a property practitioner if you want to invest or you want to do something really big. Sometimes it can go to something as small as just knowing the value of your house. Um, it could be for insurance purposes. It could be for, um, you know, should you ever wish to sell. Um, there's been many cases uh, with divorce or with uh, deceased estates where people become so shocked with the value of their houses, you know. And having that, um, that sense of knowing the true worth of your property, you know, but also on the basis of you need clarity when you're going to engage with anybody else should they come into your home. So whether it comes from a viewing, if you want to rent out your property, you know, just to have somebody to engage with on that basis. And it's true you can actually engage with your property by yourself in the same way that if you are sick, you can take care of yourself. But you don't want to give yourself the risk of a 50% chance that you make yourself worse. In the same way with your property, you don't want to oversell it and you don't want to undersell it as well. So just uh, more than anything, the purpose is linked to clarity of need. Mm. Mm, so, that mm. was a beautiful definition and I feel like that exactly <clears throat> is your purpose, mm. right? Um, and I wanted to touch on, I don't know if you want to share your age with the viewers, but you're very young in the game, right? Yes, yes. Extreme, you're young, but you've also <laughs> been in the game for a, a kind of a short time, a year, very almost short. reaching, you know, longer Correct. than that. And I want to find out from you, would you say that you have an advantage being a younger agent? Yes. Okay. No, definitely. Um, <laughs> so for clarity's sake, uh, I am 25, 26 next month. Yeah. Um, so essentially, my, my little time with real estate, I've actually noticed day by day, actually, with each and every transaction. It's been a matter of you really get to know people. And, but more than anything, you really get to know property. Because in any industry that you engage in, um, time is obviously of the essence. There will always be an advantage, regardless of literally whatever industry you enter in, that age will be your advantage. Um, so I'm really happy to have actually woken up, in a sense, to you know, my purpose, as we've actually stated earlier. So um, my purpose in real estate, having encountered it uh, at the age of 25, literally, but having started at 24, mm. um, you know, you're, you're a rookie and real estate has its stigmas, like you've said, mm. where a lot of old people have been known to 
uh, you know, be property professionals. Um, and then you have in certain circles, people just talk about property from just an investment perspective, but then to know how important and crucial it is that we really know um, every single paradigm in the structuring of our homes. Is it correct for, um, for you to sell your house now? Is it correct um, uh, for you to rent it now? For who? You know, because you'll actually find, literally I've engaged people who've had really strict preferences from a person saying that I don't want um, a tenant of this particular age. I don't, and then you really know your community. You know, um, and for example, the best one that I can actually give is um, when I started in real estate, literally last year, August, I, w I was centered in, in, in Randburg and seeing the difference in demand in the markets where a one bedroom can actually sell for literally 400,000. Mm. But here in the midst of Sandton, you know, in the heart of the city, you, it could actually go for even a million. And you see that it's a matter of demand, but you're actually challenged to know your community. You're challenged to engage with everybody. But most importantly, you're really uh, challenged as a person because mm. as you know, uh, real estate is uh, essentially like a glorified sales job, yeah. you know? So then the, I, I barely have anybody micromanaging me. So I have to literally teach myself yeah. this discipline. And I have to teach myself consistency and having the privilege to do so, um, you know, at this uh, age, you know, uh, is, is uh, more than anything, it's a really great mm. privilege to learn because I also get to really learn myself and it becomes even more challenging, especially when I'm going to engage in buying a big house myself. That professional knowledge that I've been exposed to has really mm. given me the edge. I have two questions, right? Because mm. you've, you've said quite a lot, I have so many. What have you learned about mm. yourself, right? <clears throat> so you got into this market and we were mid-pandemic. Mid yeah. Um, what have you learned about CAT mm. during this time? That's my first one. Mm -hmm. My second question mm -hmm. is, you talk about how we need to ask ourselves all the correct questions yes. when jumping into this. Mm -hmm. And you're also preparing to buy your own property. Mm -hmm. um, what is one of the most important questions you ask yourself and what mm -hmm. have you learned about yourself in this time? All right. So in all honesty, look, I think um, I've, I've really appreciated our ability to actually pinpoint our flaws so that there's a level of honesty we can have with ourselves. And my uh, issue is so my uh, a portion of my background actually stems from boarding school essentially mm. so you know m the whole bureaucratic system being told but not understanding why you're being told is something i've really had a problem with mm. um so literally after leaving being in this position with real estate where um from tuesday until sunday nobody is calling me unless it's by appointment or anything so i had to learn integrity mm. you're dealing with people that have sentimental values um, you know for their homes and they're telling you literally the price of their homes and this is before an evaluation and you I, I had to learn how to be very assertive this is something that I, I, I learned because in engaging with different people I then became uh, more assertive I learned that it is something I lacked yeah. um, integrity on the basis of I had to say what I mean and mean what I say um, and, and I, I think the most important one which I can literally say at this at this age is something that I'm uh, still refining is discipline mm. and I'm noticing that <clears throat> discipline is very overlooked but in the same way it's also it, it's a key factor because that's what defines anybody's career because it's more it's not just associated with the money from what it is that you do your discipline literally is the cornerstone of why you wake up and why you go to sleep at the time at which you do um, I'm, I'm also a believer uh, 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 and you know just being rooted in, in spirituality is, yeah. is, is very important uh, on the basis of uh, this industry is literally like the craziest roller coaster. The highs are very high mm. and the lows are extremely yeah. low. So we're talking from a financial aspect to dealing with rejection. Mm. I had to learn um, and actually pat myself on the back actually and say that I actually do have a better mechanism when it comes to dealing with rejection but it's not something everybody has mm. so when you learn how to engage in that it's how do you deal with uh, uh, rejection do you have the discipline to go when no one is calling you to you know because the, the temptation just for anybody else to just stay in bed is always there yeah. you know and just become upset especially in the midst of a pandemic mm. like you've said so really engaging in this industry um, has been something that has really taught me to be very assertive regardless of your industry your 
assertiveness. You have to know your self-worth. Right. It becomes very useless for us to watch all of these motivational videos and we don't apply, apply them mm. with extreme and utmost practicality, mm. you know. But I, I've also learned we have to learn to break down. You know, uh, and and break down for uh, on both contexts. You know, there's always a breakthrough after a breakdown, mm. male or female. Embrace the pain, embrace the struggle. Mm. You know, because it makes the end of the road for that particular season so much more worth it. Yeah. You know, um, the, the the roots that grow out of soil after a rain. That is the relationship there. You could either uh, uh, cry in the midst of a rain and really curse. The, the, the time that the seed is spending out under the soil, you could embrace it, break down, just as the seed does under the soil, mm. and allow the sun then to come and give you an opportunity. Because right. I believe that opportunities, especially the ones that we make for ourselves, they, they, they do exist. Yeah. They do exist and they are truly there. Um, so assertiveness, really know your worth because mm. any industry um, will always be tested. Any mm. industry will always be testing. And I want to talk up on this yeah. right now because mm. I feel like what we shouldn't forget, especially to the young <coughs> viewers at home who want to go into this industry, mm. whether it's estate agent or investing in property, because yes. I feel like learning and knowing yourself is mm. so important. Yeah. And your journey is not done. Mm. No, you no, continue to learn more about yourself on the, the on the daily. Mm -hmm. You know, um, whether it's dealing with a difficult client or whether yeah. it's dealing with whatever the case may be, you mm. just continue to. Until today, you're not you still probably break down. Indeed. But you get to a point, where you're right, where mm. um, the motivational talks or podcasts that we listen to yeah. become worth it because yeah. now we apply that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've got in the point where you're at, yeah. which is amazing. My second mm. question was a piece of advice that you tell yourself on the daily mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, advice is, um, <clears throat> I tend to see advice like a, a type of fruit that mm. you will change depending on the state that you're in. You can eat a banana today, an orange, as long as you keep eating the fruit. Um, so the piece of advice that I literally give myself all the time is, and which is what I've learned, um, uh, especially with my partner, was it's okay to feel bad. It's okay mm. to feel uh, emotions. In fact, her saying is, um, Emotions are great indicators, but they're terrible dictators. Mm. So allow it to indicate. You, if you are angry, you're not a bad person. You're angry because there's an external stimulus that has affected you in that way. So if I push you off the chair, Steve, mm. um, you cannot blame yourself for falling off. Acknowledge the fact that you've been pushed Push. off the chair. Mm. Um, and once you do that, you are then able to move forward and see your surroundings better. Um, breathe. Mm. Like breathe, uh, breathe, 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 breathe um, in each and every moment. Our, mm. our breath says so much. Take a deep breath and assess. There's something about calming the heart mm. in the heat of adrenaline that you can see the world through such a, such a clear lens, uh, through the tears, um, but also even through the joy um, on the basis of excitement is as much of a, uh, uh, how can I say it, a hindrance to progress in the same way pain can be. Because now you end up seeing things over stimulated in the same way that when you're upset, they're under stimulated. Mm. So take a breath, um, always be willing to learn. Mm. Same thing like the fruits because we are not complete. The moment you become complete, my, my philosophy is, the moment you've done everything you were meant to and learn everything that you were meant to, your time on this earth is actually, yeah. it's done. You know, so we're designed, a portion of our humanity is a, a blessing and a curse in the sense that we have to learn, but there's so much joy in the learning. Mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah, um, you know, if you, uh, look, property is very specific for me. It's a, uh, we, we have a saying in the office that it's one of the most, if not the most lucrative businesses, um, you know, because like, like we said earlier, you know, you can feel property, you mm -hmm. can touch it, you can see it. Cement dries up. It all speaks to property, paint, it dries. Mm. So, um, you know, once that is really linked to who you are, um, you, 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 be, you become not just optimistic, you know, and, and it's not positive thinking, mm. it's, a, it's a stabilization that happens. I don't know what you did, but you managed to make property very spiritual. Like, <laughs> I was like, now I look at property and I'm like, whoa, mm, like, because right. you're right, because you learn all these lessons mm. through this. And 
one thing that I really want to emphasize is what you said, I think is <clears throat> key is to seek joy in whatever seek you do. Joy. Seek it, mm. find it, whether mm. it is investing in property. Take, I always say that investing in property is taking a leap of faith, indeed. but that needs guts. Indeed, indeed. So, you indeed. know, like we can't just do it. Just do it. It's so but, crazy. You yeah. Know? Especially with, look, property, property is, it's, 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 it's big. Mm. You know, you could, it's literally the most expensive asset that anybody can own. People probably don't move out or change homes for like five, 10 years. Yeah. You know, most, they can buy cars, but their most expensive asset will be their home, the place mm. in which they uh, place their heads. And you should really have an understanding with that. There's something mm. about the buildings. If you're gonna take it from a spiritual perspective, there's a process on the basis of foundation. Yeah. So if we are to build a, a property, so you and I, SD, we take money and we want to invest, right? Mm. And it's, first of all, number one, it has to be about location. That has to be the same thing with you as a person. So where you are located as a person, same as with your assets, really defines how well it will thrive. Mm. So you can't be opening up um, a cinema in a place where people barely have shopping centers. Right. You know, there's a context to it. Um, because now when you invest in, in, into something like property, you first have to look at your surroundings. Once you've done that, if you're going to build your property on a mountain, on a rocky past, mm. What do you have to do? You have to work on that foundation. Right. Same thing you have to do as a person. Mm -hmm. Once you've worked on that foundation, you know, you've, you've, and you reinforce, it, it becomes a matter of how much more reinforcement can I do? But then we do this comparative thing, mm -hmm. you know, where, um, and as you know, comparison is a thief of joy. You look next door or two streets away, the foundation is so stable. These people have built their property and it's not, it's never shaken, you mm -hmm. know, especially in this time now in, in, in this country, we're experiencing tremors. Down the road, you build your property and it collapses, mm. you know, and then you feel so defeated. But it's a matter of go back to the basics, have a foundation. look at your foundation, you know, and then build from there. Once mm. you've established your foundation, you can build a skyscraper. Yeah. You know, never mm. ending skyscraper. Never That's ending so skyscraper. Mm. I want to, you talk about location being key. <clears throat> Indeed. And mm. one of my biggest questions, especially to someone mm. in your profession is mm. what is what advice do you give first time home buyers? Because mm. it's our first time. Mm -hmm. And like you said, emotion is attached to this. Indeed. Um, yeah, what, what, what would you say to them? So if you're gonna be a first time uh, home buyer, and this is also coming from experience as well, because this is a question that they've asked. People yeah. have come to me and they've asked for, I've had first time home, uh, home buyers looking for a one bedroom, two bedroom, looking for uh, something in the sky, you know, yeah. uh, a units in the ground, ground floor units and, and the likes. I think. <clears throat> number one is build uh, an understanding of what's your highest priority mm -hmm. if you do not have children uh, and you do not plan on having children um, being near a school will not necessarily be of much benefit to you there is traffic around the area so especially if you do not have children you do not want to be in traffic because of people coming to collect their the children kids, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so it's essentially it's not an expense that you would be comfortable with mm -hmm. Um, number two is, so if we're going to get it down to location, um, make sure you understand, do you prioritize work? Are you at work most of the time? If you are at work most of the time uh, and you live uh, with yourself, it's not of much value for you to get a four bedroom. Mm. And this is regardless of finances because people of varying ages um, will obviously have different financial brackets. So really understand your purpose of are you more, if you're always at work, then it would help for you to move closer to work, right. right? And trust me when I tell you this, there are different price ranges. A person who's earning uh, a 10,000 uh, rand income, yeah. you know, gross or net, has a home in Santa, yeah. has a home in Bramley, has a home in, in Randburg, you know? Um, and number two as well is, what is of your best convenience on the basis of, um, do you, prefer and do you enjoy driving by a mall? Uh, do you, are you okay with running to that particular mall? Um, uh, if it's not a mall, it could be a field because maybe you have a pet dog, right. you know? So all of it is, you're supposed to buy con the, the, the convenience of your time being there. Mm -hmm. If you're the kind of, per like with diplomats, so, and I'm gonna give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we'd have diplomats and contractors, right? Someone would come and they'd say, um, I want to rent out a place and I have 50,000 that I'd be able to pay per month. Mm. And usually you're probably thinking, why don't you just put that down as a down payment, right. uh, you know, and then get a bond for that. You'd rather own 
than rent, but we don't understand purpose. Mm. There are people that are renting out places for 50,000, mm. whereas people are paying a bond for 10,000. Yeah. It's based on, and how long are you going to be there? If your home has, if your work has brought you closer to that place, then you understand that if your, if your, if your, if your, if your job should be terminated, mm. then, you know, essentially your purpose would end. Mm -hmm. But if you're a person that really, you have a really good and standing relationship with your family. You don't want to move too far from the city from there, right. you know. Um, but also, if we're going to get into the financial story, mm -hmm. I think I'll just uh, clarify that one on that basis is debt is not terrible. Debt mm -hmm. can be fixed. Debt can indeed be fixed. This debt sentence that we've applied on ourselves, that because I'm in debt, I've literally stopped progressing as a human being. Mm -hmm. And you find a lot of first time home buyers, it's people at the age of 50, 40. Mm -hmm. And because they've been so scared and it's, you can get your debt eradicated. Mm -hmm. You can get it fixed and you can prioritize that and find the necessary advice to clear that. But you can own a home even under debt. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are literally guidelines to provide people with that because bank, the banks understand that Sometimes when a person is able to know that they can afford the place where they lay their head, there's a peace of mind for them to actually clear right. path, you know, mm. and clear debt on that basis. Mm. So I think um, essentially it's location, uh, your, your, how your priorities are, mm. are aligned, who you're going to be purchasing this property with on the basis of finances. Mm. Um, but, uh, and also do not be scared to move. Right. Like, do not be scared to move from yeah. where you are. Because, you know, a fear of mine is what mm. if the purpose for mm. buying ends, mm. which you spoke about. Yeah. And I'm sure maybe you know of people or experience or heard of stories where Indeed. this happened. Mm. So what then, Kat? You see, with, uh, and I, I don't even know if this is something that everybody knows, but yeah. you can cancel your bond. Right. If you get a place with the intention of getting a bond, you want to pay it off mm -hmm. um, for a period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it'll be 10, 20 years. Um, depending on you know your financial standing but you can apply for a cancellation of a bond mm -hmm. so essentially your your connection to that property from a financial aspect it mm. ends because your purpose is ended you know and that's why people or alternatively depending on what would work for you because remember priority as well and financial standing will define a lot but if it would be easier you can always rent out the place right and that play and the the amount and that's what you need us for yeah. that's my purpose <laughs> you know to essentially break that down for you and i say okay fine how much are you paying with your bond mm. so rental works differently from a sale on the basis of if you want to rent out your place we ask you first and foremost what are your running costs right and then we can define uh, uh, an amount that you can uh, have someone live there pay off this rent and this rent can double up. It can literally be the exact amount that pays off the bond, you know. And once you have that, or alternatively, which is what a lot of people are starting to do, but um, it's in a better market, you know. COVID yeah. has kind of held us in chains for a while. But essentially, you can price it in such a way that it not only pays off a bond, mm. but it, that the, the remaining amount um, can pay off half of another bond that you'd love to pay off, you know. And people are really scared of that. But it really boils down to, your perception of debt mm. you know debt is not a debt is not terrible mm. uh, on the basis of people we we like motivational people are talking about everybody wants to own an american express american mm. express is a credit card yeah you know what i mean yeah. but people are scared of debt and you got to understand the purpose associated with mm. that yeah. you know you talk about so basically <laughs> the gist of it is you're saying that we need to get to a point where if our purpose ends when mm. we if we bought our first home that home now becomes an investment opportunity yes, for you indeed. Mm. and you just work on that and that's mm. that and you know that actually leads to my next question because mm. what is a better move mm -hmm. for a first timer okay is it buying my first home or buying investment property what would you suggest so essentially when it comes to first time buyers uh fresh fresh place or investment now this is what we've seen a person comes into a unit, mm. house, freestanding, anything of that nature, and they're very aware of what they don't like. You know, they're very aware of what they don't yeah. like. So essentially, this is the positive thing when it comes to an investment. Let's say, so I'm, I'm going to try to give re really easy examples here. So let's say you're going to buy an investment uh, property that is maybe 700000 And uh, this is an investment property. The second one, which is fresh, is probably a million. Now, so we're looking at a difference of 300,000, correct? So essentially, you walk into a place and you don't like how it looks. Mm -hmm. 
let's have a look at what it is exactly that you don't like. You don't like the tiles, okay. You don't like the carpeting, okay. Um, you don't like things that are looking um, more on structure, right? right? So you're like, ah, okay, it's fine. I'll buy this house for a million, but then I'm going to save money and remove yeah, these car yeah. uh, remove these carpets or these tiles that have been placed here. Uh, whereas, if you are really open to the patient, buy an investment, and the same amount that you would have spent, that 300, now that is the difference in between the two, number one, it can literally cover the labor, it can mm. literally cover the design, mm. it literally becomes your place, because we have seen people, um, you will never buy a house that is perfect for you, mm. it was perfect for the person who lived there, yeah. but if you meet them for the first time, that they bought the place, they will tell you that I didn't like this mm. place. So they customized it to suit mm. their needs, mm. you know? So especially if it's not even structural, mm. if you don't like things like doors, you know, it's always something to consider that you can make these changes. Um, so first time buyers, especially because wow. we know that we're very prideful of our first houses. You know, you chances are it and your retirement home. Those are the two places that you're gonna live in the longest. Yeah. So you know, if you're first time, you're going to take your time with it. My father is very practical in this sense, mm -hmm. on the basis of my father bought his house. Uh, same with my mother, actually. I'm realizing that my parents are very patient people. Mm. My father bought a house on auction. And this house literally had sand in the rooms. You know, it was like it lacked in foundation and everything. Mm. And six years later, now he bought this property, um, if, I'm, if I'm correct, maybe the value is looking at somewhat slightly over a million mm -hmm. but currently and this is six years after he's done he's built a cottage and everything mm -hmm. we're looking at about triple that amount wow. now you know um because i take the opportunity to just evaluate his house so i yeah. can show him that i um, i you need me just like anybody yeah. else would <laughs> yeah. you know so um your first you, you the first place that you live in and your retirement you will live in there the longest mm -hmm. take the opportunity to really look at the place and say but we can work with this rather than I want to show everyone right. that I've bought my first house and it's, and it's done and, it's, and, it, and that's not the case. Mm. Going back to motivation, I don't know on, on, if you have the, these apps, I think it's TikTok mm. where uh, yeah. someone will show a house, it's empty, they clap, yeah, yeah. the next shot, it's complete. Mm -hmm. Because now we're trying to show each other that beauty of progress and patience mm. and, you know, buy first time owner, buy an investment, mm. buy an investment. You can afford it. If you can afford a uh, well put together place that you're gonna feel different about because trust me you will feel different about it there's a difference between seeing a house and you're excited that there's a clean pool right um but once you move in and you don't know how to take care of that pool mm. and it becomes dirty and it complicates and it be, it, in fact it makes you stay even miserable right. so you're motivated to move in is now your demoralizer for living right. in, you know mm. so buy an investment property be patient it's a beautiful thing you learn so much about yourself you know, I mean, Esti, if I can ask you a question. Sure. If you had to literally paint the current room that we're in, which mm. is white, yeah. what color would you paint if you wouldn't paint it white? This would be my lounge. Uh-huh, this would be your lounge. Ah, uh, I'm more into like a dark, like a there sand, mm -hmm. sand color. Right? Yeah. And so, now imagine, so if it's, if it's more of a sand color, mm. imagine if you moved into a place with the, with where in the lounge, for example, mm. the walls are black. Now you have to spend money to get it painted with a primer to be white right. so that you can get yours. Right. Whereas if you go into a place and it's just, it's just, um, mm. what's this? It's, just, it's been plastered. Yeah. You know it's primer, then yours. You've, you've saved time and mm. money, you know? So essentially it's like that. Mm. Yes. I think what's key and what you mm. kept reiterating is patience. Patience. And you know, on all, on most of the <clears> shows <throat> that we've done, everyone we've spoken to is mm. that this is not a quick game. No. It is, you know, take your time with it. Take your time. Be patient. And I think anything that you truly invest in Indeed. needs patience. Mm. Indeed. And we just need to apply that same theory, mm. especially to property. Especially to property. You know? Yeah, this is, it's, it's big. It's the longest, mm. it's the longest, the biggest, but the most solid mm. form of investment. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and, and that's how it differs. Essentially. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. So I agree with you indeed. I wanted to find out because we've just, you know, ended mm. off Women's Month and mm. obviously you have an eye on what's happening and mm. you're, you're based in the Santon area, yes, correct? Yeah. Um, what is your, not even what is your take, mm -hmm. your, what have you been seeing currently mm. with young individuals, people of color coming mm. into the market, women coming mm. into the market, what have you seen? Well, 
I have um, and I actually don't know how this will be taken, but uh, there's actually something I know for, for a fact happens when people come to view a property to buy or to lease. Uh, the wife is the CEO. The yeah. wife is the CEO. The wife, the, 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 the partner is the CEO. The female partner is the CEO. But this is the trend exactly. A gentleman will walk into a place and have a look at the structural design. He'll even forget that the kitchen was white. <laughs> the wife will come in. If the kitchen is big, the bathroom is big and it's, and it's white. Mm. There's a bathroom and a shower where she can take care of herself. She can be taken care of. Mm. Um, that becomes a, a deciding factor because and, and, and we understand this from a psychological perspective. Men are, men, they, they, there's, a, there's somewhat of a privilege they get uh, psychologically with the progression of things. Yeah. Women are more nurturous, so they are much better psychologically when it comes to the taking care mm -hmm. of things. That's why in, in, in many homes, especially retirement homes, you'll find that uh, the woman who's retired, she'll open up a garden, right. right? The man who's retired into his home where he's spent a lot of his time not being around, he'll probably just watch TV, yeah. you know? Um, it'll just be entertainment, but there's something about a woman's touch that is of extreme and high value yeah. because women are, we, and we should stop uh, placing it on a, on, on a scale that, number one, doesn't even make sense. Mm. Uh, women play a very great role when it comes to peace. Um, so essentially, you know, you, I've literally had guys, the, 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 the wife would literally come twice mm. because she would notice beyond cosmetics, you know, a guy will look at the structure. Is it big? Mm. The wife will look at how is it structured? Um, and this is something I've actually seen more happen in women than in men. A woman wants to know if the main bedroom is north facing because she knows that her husband uh, or her and her partner, that's the place in which they rest. It should be the warmest place. Right geographically you yeah. know so uh just that is just it, it's a privilege mm -hmm. so whether you are single married or anything if you're looking for a property a house anything if you're going to buy a dog go with your wife <laughs> go with your girlfriend go with, go with your mother with you. you know yeah. take a woman with you all yeah the time. i love mm -hmm. that um mm -hmm. i wanted to find out a little bit more about so this is a true story mm -hmm. uh didn't happen to me happened to family members really close to me mm -hmm. just bought their first property okay um and i the relationship you spoke about your purpose mm -hmm. that's cat's purpose mm -hmm. as an agent yes agents out there have different purposes indeed see things differently mm -hmm. i want to find out about the role that you continue to hold after i've purchased my property after i've done i'm done working with you mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. what is your role thereafter all right so uh, so purpose is what got me into real estate mm -hmm. and then there's various motivators mm -hmm. right from uh, lucrativity of the business etc one of them is and this is my personal yeah, experience yeah. um we bought a house with my my mother bought a house in Kruisdorp. incompetent agents resulted in unhappy uh, buyers Buy. mm. uh, till this very day there's issues and problems that uh, you know, my mother has had to deal with because so much was not divulged to her in terms of the, the house that she bought. Mm. And this was a retirement house, you know, and this agent uh, was really careless in information. We didn't have keys, you know, you walk, you move into a place and we don't know the relationship that um, the agent will have with the seller, right. you know, and if it's just a quick deal, and this is something that needs to be emphasized, uh, real estate agents are there to service both buyers and sellers mm. because we will have a long lasting relationship with both of you. Because should you decide to sell the person who's bought, I would love for you to contact me, the person who you've used to buy the house. Yeah. So essentially uh, the story was that inconvenience is something that my, my mother has literally had to deal with till this very day. Mm. Pro um, she probably uh, has owned the, uh, the property for about three years now. Mm. Till, till, literally till this very day we'll notice uh, you know so many problems that yeah. could have been and that the agent knew that uh, would have affected our decision to not buy the property right. you know um, because like the swimming pool example that's literally what happened oh, yeah. uh, you know that you see a swimming pool and it's clean but you move into the place you don't know how to take care of a swimming pool you've realized that the machine using to clean the swimming pool is broken mm. it doesn't work it's not it's outdated so um, and we go on every basis, like we discussed earlier. We can be 
we can assist you with getting in contact with anyone from a plumber to a painter to, you know, um, that's why we call property professionals and not house sellers or house salesmen, mm. you know, because we're, we're professionals on the basis of, do you know that your property has a servitude on it? Mm. You know, that there's a certain portion of land that appears as though you own it yeah. but your neighbor's doing as they please but mm. you'll find out that with our with our assistance we can find out that oh there's a servitude on your property right. you know there's the, they have a legal uh, a right of use of that portion of the mm. property you know and that's something that you can only get knowing that you're dealing with a practitioner of that particular asset mm. and i think it's so key especially for first-time home buyers yeah. is that the jargon always throws us off, right? There are things <laughs> yeah. that we have no idea, mm. like, and these words and these things are just so foreign to us. Mm. And that is definitely when we need you Indeed. to come in and be like, no, mm. th this is not okay. You what's know? what's happening is wrong. on the back is wrong. Mm. Yeah. Um, Kat, I just want to close off. Thank you firstly so, much, you so much for sharing. Because what I loved is that you shared a lot of your own personal experiences, whether it's, you know, your mom or dad's story, but you were present in those stories. Mm. And that's what the show is about, sharing real lived experiences because you learn from it and yet here you are still in the profession but Indeed. helping us to not go through these and make those mistakes which mm -hmm. is key mm -hmm. my final question to you is and i i don't want to end on a sour note but i want to talk about the challenges that first-time yeah. home buyers mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. and i want to find out from you the biggest challenge that we face and how can we avoid not facing mm -hmm. those challenges or making those mistakes indeed um look the find the first one like we spoke of mm -hmm. uh, property is it's a big step big leap for you psychologically mentally um also financially i'll start financially yeah um know how much you can afford buying a house um and this is the thing if you're going to buy a house there are certain things you need to pay around mm -hmm. know is there a neighborhood association if you're in a complex know the levies know mm -hmm. the rates because the house might cost um a million two million but the levies the rates and this is excluding electricity, mm. might be 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Yeah. You know, and this is something that you haven't planned. So in order for you to do that, get in touch with a, a property a professional, mm. a property practitioner that will get you in touch with everyone to break that down for you mm. accordingly. Um, you know, because we are in touch with lawyers, we are in touch with bond originators of varying companies. Mm. You know, we are just in touch with everyone that could really help, not just your purpose, uh, not just your purchase, but mm. your stay as well, mm. as well as, you know, uh, when the time is necessary, your departure as well, you know, because you should know that if you have struggled to pay your bond, what will happen? What exactly will the bank do? Yeah. You know, and it's important for you to know that so that you can get the necessary assistance because it's not worth it um, playing on ignorance when you have property professionals that can help you, then the bank wants to sell your property at mm. half its value, mm. you know, so... Um, Essentially, get in touch with the real estate mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, agent, get in touch with the property professional, ask your questions. Our evaluations are free. Legally, an evaluation is free where you are entitled to know everything surrounding your property and everything surrounding the finances that are the crux of your property. Mm. So, And indeed. these are things we should know because, you know, indeed. they are people out there scamming us. Scamming you. So, in mm. short, mm -hmm. you're the plug. I, I'm the plug. I'm the plug. <laughs> you're the plug. Yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> we're here. We're here. Thank mm. you so much thank for you taking so much the for having time. Me, yeah, Steve. thank you so thank much. You so I can't much. wait to chat again. We need to have these conversations, indeed. you know, and obviously people now know who you are. You've shared your story, so they also know where to get some more information. Yeah, no, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our viewers at home for taking the time out and listening to the stories, the wonderful stories that our guests share with us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Do not forget, I still want to hear some of your amazing stories, so do not be shy. Reach out to us. That's Private Property on Facebook or Instagram. DM us, and I will definitely make contact with you because I'd love to hear and go on that property journey with you. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a blessed week further.